Parabolistic. Please stand and remain standing for the national anthem and the invocation. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare of us bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave? For the land of the free and the home of the brave. Let us pray. God of new beginnings, we ask your blessing as we begin. As we begin this new day, this new semester, this new school year, this new chapter in Gilman history, bless us. Bless our new faces and braces, our new backpacks and athletic sacks. Bless new students, staff and teachers, new stadiums, fields and features. Bless fresh class lists and lunches from Flick. Bless friendships that sustain us and challenge us and give us lift. Bless new courses and sections new planners and palettes and plays with new purpose. In your light, we pray. Bless all the new growth, wisdom, and insight this year will bring. And even in challenge and frustration, may we continue to sing as one. One family, one brotherhood, one Gilman. One in excellence, one in humility, one in integrity, one in honor, one in respect, one in Gilman, one in your light where we truly find light itself, stronger and faster, wiser and brighter than we could ever be alone. Amen? Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. Oh, do we really have to? Really have to? At least we don't have to sit. At least we don't have to sit in the Psalm 36, verses 7 to 9. Please note that the last line contains Gilman's motto. How precious is your steadfast love, O God! The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light do we see light. Pledge our 
ourselves to you. We're forging ahead and reaching far beyond. With Gilman our strength and brotherhood our bond. When we leave these, leave these walls with memories we hold dear. It's Gilman's proud echoes that in our hearts will hear. A quote from Admiral William H. McRaven. During my time in the SEAL teams, I had, no I had numerous setbacks, and in each case, someone came forward to help me. Someone who had faith in my abilities. Someone who saw potential in me where others might not. Someone who risked his or her own reputation to advance my career. I have never forgotten those people, and I know that anything I achieve in my life was, res was a result of others who have helped me along the way. None of us is immune, to, none of us is immune from life's tragic moments. Like the small rubber boat we had in basic SEAL training, it takes a team of good people to get you to your destination in life. You cannot paddle the boat alone. Find someone to share your life with. Make as many friends as possible. And never forget that your success depends on others. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, Quinn, for your readings. Thanks, Dr. Moe, for the invocation. And uh, to a lot of people, thank you, the buildings and ground staff, particularly for helping to get things ready um, the, new, the new Grandstand, McBride Family Grandstand, welcome to this new facility. The fields look fantastic, Mr. Denholm, thank you. Um, and then Mr. Broadus, Mr. Flint, Ms. Beam, Ms. Hammer, Ms. Franz, as always, thanks for your efforts to organize this convocation, bring us all together. So a special welcome as we start the 2018-19 school year, a special welcome to anybody who's new to Gilman, whether you're an adult or a student, we're glad that you're with us, and we hope that you're being made to feel welcome. For those of you who are returning students and, and faculty and staff, please reach out to those who are new and make sure that they are, in fact, feeling like Gilman is their home. And then finally, so I have to sort of turn during, during parts of this, finally, a special welcome to the class of 2019. Gentlemen, it's great to have you here. It's great to have you seated where you are. Congratulations on getting to this point. Looking forward to the school year. How about it for the class of 2019, everybody? <laughs> Stephen just read a quote from retired Admiral William H. McRaven, and I'll, I'll bring it back up again in a couple of minutes. He's now retired. He was a four-star admiral in the United States Navy, and he spent most of his career, if not all of his career, in the Navy, 37 years serving as a Navy SEAL and then leading teams of Navy SEALs. After retirement and in 2014, he gave the graduation or commencement address at the University of Texas. In it, he outlined 10 different lessons that if practiced by anyone, could help that person change the world for the better. That address, which many of you I think saw last year in a middle school assembly, went viral on YouTube. And over the next few years, Wherever Admiral McRaven went, he was stopped by, by people countless times on the street who wanted to talk more about that speech, share what it meant to them, share maybe a lesson that they had that was similar. And all of that positive feedback inspired Admiral McRaven to write a book that expanded on each of the 10 lessons that formed the backbone of that graduation speech. The book, as many of you know, is called Make Your Bed. And I hope the upper school students um, are starting to recognize this. It was your required summer reading. And Make Your Bed is the first lesson of the 10 in the speech and in the book. Today, I want to highlight chapter two, which is called, You Can't Go It Alone. And in this chapter, Admiral McRaven writes about the value of teamwork, a lesson he and his team of six other SEAL tadpoles, and that's the name that the people training to become Navy SEALs, aspiring to become Navy SEALs, were called tadpoles. His team of tadpoles learned this lesson very clearly 
by be being required to carry a 10-foot rubber raft with them virtually everywhere they went. They ran up and down sand dunes at the beach with it. They paddled it through the surf and then out in the, in the open ocean for countless miles and hours. They even carried it with them to the dining hall. Over time, the tadpoles came to an important realization. On any given day, one of the seven men might be sick and unable to carry or paddle the boat at full strength. And on these days, others picked up the slack, knowing that the favor would be returned at another time. And the message from this exercise was clear and simple. They needed each other to succeed. As Admiral McRaven puts it, if you want to change the world, find someone to help you paddle. This lesson was put to good use when 25 years later, Admiral McRaven found himself facing perhaps the biggest and maybe most dangerous challenge of his life. See, during what was supposed to be a routine parachute jump, which by the way, I love how anything, a, a parachute jump can be described as routine. Like, hey, what are you up to today? Well, I'm gonna jump out of an airplane, how about you? Admiral McRaven, during this routine jump, was hit by another parachute at 120 miles an hour spun out of control, got tangled up in his own chute, and ripped his pelvis apart before landing miles away from the drop zone. He'd be in bed for the next two months trying to recover. For the first time in his life, this young Navy SEAL felt no longer invincible, no longer felt like he was a superhero. So how did he overcome this challenge? In the days and weeks and months of painful, frustrating recovery, Admiral McRaven leaned on others, his wife, his friends, his fellow SEALs. And with their love and support, he got better. And here's what Admiral McRaven wrote about this lesson. This is a quote. During my time, and this is what Stephen read just a second ago, during my time in the SEAL teams, I had numerous setbacks, and in each case, someone came forward to help me. Someone who had faith in my abilities. Someone who saw potential in me where others might not. Someone who risked his or her own reputation to advance my career. I've never forgotten these people, and I know that anything I achieved in my life was a result of others who have helped me along the way. None of us is immune from life's tragic moments, he continued. Like the small rubber boat we had in basic SEAL training, it takes a team of good people to get you to your destination in life. You cannot paddle the boat alone. Find someone to share your life with, make as many friends as possible, and never forget that your success depends on others. Over the last week, People across the United States and really the world have been paying tribute to the late Senator John McCain, who passed away last weekend. Like Admiral McRaven, Mr. McCain served in the United States Navy, not as a SEAL, but as a fighter pilot. And famously, after his plane was shot down during the Vietnam War, he endured a brutal experience as a prisoner of war for about six years. During that time, Mr. McCain was given the chance to be released before some of his fellow prisoners who had been captured before him. But he didn't think that that felt right, and so he refused. Eventually, he was released, and as a civilian, Mr. McCain traded his military service for political service, a career that included four years in the House of Representatives and 31 years in the Senate, representing the state of Arizona. He sought the Republican nomination for, the, for president in 2000, and then in 2008, he was the Republican nominee for the presidency. Along the way, he established a reputation for being an independent thinker. His nickname was the Maverick, an independent thinker who was not afraid to go against his own party if he thought it was the right thing to do for his country. Even if one did not agree with any or some of Senator McCain's politics. By all accounts, his career was a very distinguished one, and he was driven by a deep sense of commitment and service. And I think one of the neat testaments to this fact 
is that the two men that are going to um, deliver eulogies at Mr. McCain's service are the two men who defeated him when he was running to be president. Men from different parties, I should add, too. President, former President George W. Bush and former President Barack Obama. In a 2005 interview, Senator McCain, Senator McCain reflected on, an, on the influence and forces that drove this life of service. He spoke of a high school English teacher and football coach, William B. Ravnell, a man who had served in World War II. This was a man who, in McCain's words, quote, made Shakespeare come alive and had incredible leadership talents. According to McCain, quote again, what he taught me more than anything else was to strictly adhere to our school's honor code. If we stuck to those standards of integrity and honor, note the Gilman Five, then we could be proud of ourselves. We could serve causes greater than our self-interest. While a prisoner of war, Mr. McCain found an example of honor in an unlikely source, one of the Vietnamese prison guards. This guard, this man, without ever speaking a word, would enter McCain's cell at night and loosen the ropes that bound him. And in, in so doing, it eased the pain and the suffering that McCain was experiencing at night. The guard would then return in the early morning and secretly tighten the ropes so that nobody who came in, people who were not as, as, as compassionate, I guess, who were not as compassionate, would not know that this was going on at night. These examples of Ravenel and the prison guard clearly made a strong and last impression, impression on McCain and fed that sense of duty. Reflecting on these men, he explained that his own sense of honor and integrity steered him to serve his country. Here's what Mr. McCain had to say, Senator McCain. I believe that the means to real happiness and true worth of a person is measured by how faithfully we serve a cause, a cause greater than our self-interest. In America, we celebrate the virtues of the quiet hero, the modest man who does his duty without complaint or expectation of praise, the man who listens closely for the call of his country, and when she calls, answers without reservation, not for fame or reward, but for love. As we look to a new school year at Gilman, the stories and examples of Admiral McRaven and Senator McCain help to capture some important, really important ideas about a Gilman education. It's our mission to educate boys in mind, body, and spirit. No doubt you've heard that language before. I speak about it every time I'm in front of a group of prospective parents, and every year at the beginning of the year, the faculty and staff revisit that mission. It's the reason we exist as a school, and it's the thing that unites us all in a common educational cause. And it stems from our belief that in order to be complete people, in school terminology, fully educated people, we must develop not just our minds, but also our bodies and spirits. And this is what it means to be our best, fullest selves, also language you hear from us a lot. And going through our school days, the education of the mind and body are plainly evident. It's really easy to see the development taking place in classrooms, on the fields, in the gym. The cultivation of the spirit, on the other hand, is not as easy to grasp or to see. I like to think about the development of the spirit in two ways. The first is in our motto, into a lumine lumen, which came up in Quinn's reading, which means in that light, there is light. There's great promise in all of us, in each of you, an inner spirit or light that drives who we are as people. What's more, that promise serves at light itself, extending outward and helping to brighten our world. This idea leads to the second way we can think about the spirit. As individuals, we're part of something much larger than ourselves, and we're accountable to those larger forces. That recognition, I would argue, is a spiritual exercise. And this is where Admiral McRaven, Senator McCain, and Gilman all come together. We're fully educated, fully developed people when we have cultivated, cultivated the mind, the body, and the spirit. In order to do that, we must tap into our innate potential that, as our motto suggests, helps us to define our spirit. In order to do that, we need help. As Admiral McRaven suggests, it takes a team of people 
to help us reach that potential and be our best selves. We can't paddle the boat alone. The individual needs the collective. Furthermore, it's our ability to see beyond ourselves that allows us to live most fully. As Senator McCain maintained, we're most worthy, we're fullest, when we're putting our talents to use in the service of a greater cause. The collective needs the individual. Both Admiral McRaven and Senator McCain spoke of the importance of the relationships between our inner selves and the people and the world around us. In short, we need the help of others to be our best selves so that we might help others in order to be our best selves. Confused? A little bit, I'm confused a little bit. Point it this way. Everything is connected. Just as the mind and the body and the spirit interact with each other and connect us to the larger world. So to sum it up, at Gilman we think about education in the fullest sense possible. We want you to develop your mind, your body, and your spirit. Spirit is the light that shines within each of us and exists in the recognition that we are part of something larger than ourselves. The mind, the body, and the spirit all work together and depend on each other. And as we strive to be our best, fullest selves in mind, body, and spirit, we need to realize that we're, we'll be at our best when one, we get support from others, and two, when we look beyond ourselves to serve others. So gentlemen, as we enter a new school year, remember, be first class citizens. Practice the Gilman Five. Also remember that we believe in you and your potential as whole people. And we believe in your ability to make the world a better place. Tapping into your inner strengths and seeking the support of others, be your best selves and let your light shine on the world. Thanks and welcome to the school year. And remain standing for oh God our help in ages past and the benediction. Oh God our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Our shelter from the stormy blast and our eternal home. Before the hills in order stood, or earth received her frame. From everlasting thou art God to endless years the same. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Be Thou art guide while life shall last and our eternal home. O oh God, O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope this year to come. Fill our year with blessing and grace. Fill our hearts with joy and faith. Fill our classrooms with energy. Fill our lessons with creativity. Fill our minds with wisdom. Fill our bodies with strength. Fill our spirits with hope. Fill our relationships with love. Fill our dreams with compassion. And fill our world with light. And filled and blessed as we so richly are, may our blessings overflow generously into a world so thirsty for all that we have to offer. Amen? Amen. Amen.